Hello and welcome back to Jack's Mac YouTube channel. So I'm going to do one third and final installment of the Homebridge series because one thing I did at home that I thought was really cool and I wasn't even sure it was possible was create a command where I will say, hey Siri, let's play Fortnite. And the TV, the PlayStation, and Fortnite itself will launch. They're all able to connect up to HomeKit, which is pretty amazing. If you've got a Samsung TV, I believe it's 2014 or later, it runs the Tizen operating system. This operating system does have a HomeBridge plugin, meaning you can control the Samsung TV with HomeKit. And believe it or not, PlayStation and even the specific apps for PlayStation or specific games, I should say, have their own codes and way of HomeKit recognizing them specifically. So pretty amazing and I'm going to show you how I did that. So let's go. Okay, so the first step that we need to take is to add the PlayStation plugin. And we're just going to go to Homebridge and we're going to search for PS4 Waker. There it is. Install. And now if we take a look at the iPad, you're going to notice it is not there yet. You see there is no reference to PlayStation at all. That's because there's two steps that we need to take. First of all, restart Homebridge after you update the config file. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Okay, so back at Homebridge, we have to go to the config file, which you get to by clicking on the config option up at the top that will load the configuration page. That's going to give you all this text. Now we're going to need the PlayStation plugin added to this configuration file. When modifying these configuration files, always make sure that your brackets have an opening and a closing bracket and make sure that all the commas are at the end of each item. Now how do you get the information? We go to the NPM screen. So every plugin has an NPM link. If you click on that NPM link, it'll take you to that plugin's information. And this one shows you how you'll add the PlayStation to the configuration file. So here we're just going to go ahead and copy this and paste it into the configuration file and then modify it with our own information. Here's the configuration file and you see that I've pasted the PS4 Waker platform information at the bottom. I've replaced the serial number and the model number with my own. That information can be found on the back of the PlayStation 4 Pro. I don't know if it's there for all PlayStation models, but I know it's there for the PlayStation Pro. It's probably on the back for everyone. Here we are back at the home app and you see there is still no reference to the PlayStation at all in the home app. So it still doesn't recognize it. Now watch what happens when I restart Homebridge. I'm back at the Mac Mini and I am restarting it now. There it is, it just showed up. There it is with a generic PS4018 name. So now what happens if I click that? See that switch that came out at the top? That's what's used to control the PlayStation. Now, here's the thing. The PlayStation is not responding yet. It just kind of shuts off and it gets an error message and if we were to go down to the man cave where I have the PlayStation, you'll see it's not responding at all. And there's a reason for that. Back at Homebridge, you'll see that you're getting an error, login connection refused, retrying soon. You could also be getting a bunch of red text that says something to the effect of socket error, something like that. That's because your PlayStation is still not being connected. So what you have to do is you have to install a plugin that you actually cannot find when you go to the um, search. It's called PS4 Waker. Again, I know it seems redundant, but it's called PS4 Waker and you can't find it here. So what you have to do, you have to go to terminal and just install it. npm space install ps4-waker space dash G that installs. Now you've got that plugin. 
So what that has done is created kind of a fake PlayStation on the network that you can use to wake up and turn off the original PlayStation. Okay, so back on the iPhone, you're going to launch PS4 second screen app, and that's gonna find that weird little PS4018 or whatever they're gonna call it, that's on HomeKit, and that is now connected. Here we have the iPad running the Home app. There's the PS4. And we are now in the man cave. That's the PlayStation at the bottom with the smart TV on top. And let's go ahead and tap that. And it is firing up. Turned on the PlayStation with the app. Turn it off. And it's shutting down. Now before you turn it on again, it should be off for a while because it'll time out and it will get confused. So give it some time. You see the PlayStation is still trying to shut down. Now it's in orange mode. Don't know if the camera's picking that up, but now it's orange. Once it's finally orange, then you'd be able to turn it back on again. There we go. If you, if you toggle it off and on too fast, it doesn't work. And you just gotta wait a little bit. So now, here's the thing. I need to change this because look what it's called. So if I say, hey Siri, mm -hmm. turn off PS4018. Got it. And it's shutting off. Hey Siri, uh -huh. turn on PS4018. One moment. I tried, but the office switched to And it's coming off. Now see, if you toggle it fast like that, it will get confused. But obviously it worked. So now, because this is ridiculous, let's change this name. I'm gonna open it up, I'm gonna hit details, and I'm gonna change this to PlayStation. And I'm gonna change the room to Man Cave. Okay? Hey Siri, turn off the PlayStation. Okay. Off. Give it some time. Let it go down. Hey Siri, turn on the PlayStation. I'm probably toggling it up and on too fast. That says it's on. So if you toggle it off and on too fast, it won't work. Hey Siri, turn on the PlayStation. Just a moment. I tried, but the man cave switch didn't respond. So it's not perfect. But just because Siri is confused doesn't mean it's not working. If you wait long enough, it does work more consistently. But because I'm playing with it, it's probably getting mad at me. Hey Siri, turn off the PlayStation. Now let's wait a reasonable amount of time. That is off. Still shutting off. The PlayStation fan just stopped. I'm gonna wait for that white to go orange. Now it's orange. I'm gonna try this again. Hey Siri, turn on the PlayStation. Just a moment. I tried, but the man cave switch didn't respond. So it says it doesn't work, but it's clearly working. So as long as you're willing to tolerate Siri lying to you, it is working. So moving on, we're gonna to try to get the apps to launch on their own. Okay, for the last part of this, we need to configure the config file again. What I want you to notice is the brackets. Now, the way I have this configured, I'm actually in your way because of the, uh, the way I have my, my stuff uh, 
align. So let me fix that. Move this out of your way so you can actually see everything. Okay. So what I want you to notice is the brackets in the config file. If you have a syntax error, it's going to be indicated by red rectangles on the right. So I just removed a comma from line 59 and that created a red rectangle. That means when you save it, it's not going to like it. It's going to give you a syntax error. So you have to be careful of two main things. One, whenever a bracket opens, a bracket set opens, like the squiggly one on line one, it has to close somewhere. That closes on 69. If you look at the line two, that squiggly bracket opens up on line two, and the first character of that line is in that second column. And so you gotta see where that squiggly bracket closes, and it closes there. Whenever you're adding a new item, that has to be separated by a comma, or it's not going to like it. Take away that comma, now you have the red square, it won't save. So always go through and make sure that every opening bracket has a closing bracket and every item is separated by a comma. So back down in the PS Waker platform area, we need to add apps. So that apps just got pasted in here like so, except I modified the apps. So here's my opening bracket on line 51. You see that that closes underneath the first character of line 51 on line 64. Open, closed. Next has the squiggly open, squiggly close on line 65. Finally, we get to apps and we have the opening and we have on line 51, closing on line 64. And that's just the exercise you have to go through to make sure there's no syntax errors. Now, to actually add your app, you've got to put them in just like this, the, open it with the squiggly bracket, in the indentation from apps, just like you see here, add the ID and add the name of your app. Now, where do you get, then the name of the app could be anything. I could have called Fall Guys Mickey Mouse and when I tell it to launch Mickey Mouse, it will launch that. So the name could be whatever you want, but the ID is the fun part. That's what you gotta be careful for. So for Fall Guys, what is the ID? Now I'm gonna include this link in the show notes but you go to this ps4database.io forward slash search. And if you search for Fall Guys, you see four entries. In the region you see EU, depending on what region you're in, maybe you are in the EU, you'll use one of these that are in the EU. I'm in the US, so I'm gonna use one of these two. I really don't know what the difference is. So I'm just gonna start out by using this title ID, the one with a 23220. I'm gonna copy that, I'm gonna, and I pasted that back in here. And that's how you do it. Then you just name them, look up the ID for Fortnite, look up the ID for I and Kingdom Hearts 3. So, all my commas and all my brackets are in, in place. I can save this. And as we know, whenever you change any of the config files, you've got to restart Homebridge. And if you don't, and you look at your, uh, your home app, you're going to see there's no Fortnite or anything while Homebridge is restarting. Let's take a look at the iPad, see what happens. We have activity. And now if I press and hold on the PlayStation, We have some stuff added. Fall Guys, Fortnite, and Kingdom Hearts 3. Sound familiar? Yes. So now this is actually recognizing all the apps that we put on there. Now here's a really cool part. Let's go down to the man cave, and I'm going to flip just one of these apps up, and you're going to see everything turn on, at least for the PlayStation. Now we're down in the man cave. PlayStation's in rest mode, sending no signal out to the TV. And down in the home app, you see the Man Cave PlayStation. So if we open that, press and hold, you see the different apps. So if I switch on 
Fortnite, you hear the PlayStation respond. That automatically opens it up. And PlayStation's on, and guess what just launched? So, now you think of the possibilities, because if you say, hey Siri, launch Fortnite, open Fortnite, it will... I can't open apps here. Sorry about that. Right. Yes, I know, Siri. The point is, if you say, turn on Fortnite... Siri will do it, and it'll launch all automatically, as you can see. Now, it's just about setting up a scene to include the game you want, the lights you want, but now it's all interactive with HomeKit. Now, one thing I wanted to show you was, remember on Fall Guys how we weren't sure what the right ID was? Let's launch Fall Guys. It says, cannot find the application. Do you want to look at the PlayStation Store? Well, we know for sure Fall Guys is installed on this. And we know it works. So, we cancel that. Actually, Sammy, do you mind canceling that? I have an assistant today. It's very helpful. Mm -hmm. And now we've got uh, Kingdom Hearts 3. But I don't know if the disc is in there. Let's try it. Okay, well, the disc isn't in there. But it's working. It didn't say it wasn't installed. So the reason why Fall Guys did not work is because when we saw there were two IDs, I used the wrong one. Now, again, I'm not sure how you tell which ID is the right one. So I'm going to go and switch that ID out to the other one, and I bet it works after that. And I have switched the ID to the other ID for Fall Guys. So now back on the iPad, we're going to just go ahead and slide that up. PlayStation has responded. Welcome back to PlayStation. And what happens? There's Fall Guys. So you gotta make sure you got the right ID. So if one's not working, don't freak out. You probably gotta use the other ID. Obviously, sometimes it can be confusing. And finally, now that you've got your apps specifically responding in HomeKit, now you can get creative. Now you can make your scenes and do whatever you want with all your other HomeKit apps. So for example, I just created this scene where if I say, hey Siri, let's play Fortnite. Hopefully he doesn't respond to me right now because my son's playing on the PlayStation. But if I were to say that, based on this scene, it will turn on the TV and turn on Fortnite. Now you might be asking, well, how did you add the TV? Well, the TV is just, if you search for Tizen plugin in the same way you added all the other plugins, um, the Samsung TV is, is there. You just add that, add your IP address, add the MAC address of your TV, and you're good. And the smart TV is on there. So um, you can use that to automatically turn on your TV, turn on the PlayStation, turn on Fortnite, and this is one command. So there it is. That's how you get it all up and running. So hopefully you have some fun with that. And uh, all I have is a PlayStation. So I don't know if this, I haven't looked into if it works with Xbox, other versions of PlayStation, Switch, other consoles. I, I'm sure some enterprising programmer has made a plugin that does it. But uh, anyway, uh, the process I'm sure will be similar to what we just saw today. So Hope you enjoyed it. If you liked this video, uh, go ahead and give it a like and uh, please subscribe and see what I come up next with next time. Thank you very much for watching and talk to you later. Bye.